All right, my friend, we are almost done. We are so close to being home and wrapping this song up and wrapping this course up. But first, there's one more step in this mix process. Now, we're, of course, already in step seven, which is the final step, which is to dial in the mix. But within step seven here, I walked you through the first four steps or the four out of the five steps inside of step seven itself. And the fifth part, the fifth phase of the mixing process is a critical critical step that you cannot overlook. You need to do this. And this is what I'm going to call the thumbs up, thumbs down technique. Now, just a bit of background. I learned this technique from, I don't know who it was. I wish I knew. This was a YouTube video I watched probably a decade ago. And it was somebody giving a lecture on songwriting. And one of the things he mentioned was he was answering the question, how do you know when a song is complete? And his response was, You listen to your song or you play your song. And if your thumb stays up the whole time from start to finish, then your song is done. And that stuck with me ever since. And so when I went about to create this course and when I go about to create systems like this, like we have here with this mixing system, I try to infuse these systems with memorable visual images, right? And this is one of those where I just love the thing of thumbs up, or thumbs down. And that thumbs down is specifically what we're paying attention to here. Because in when we're trying to wrap up a song and finish up a mix, it's very important that when we listen to that song from start to finish that we want our thumb to stay up the whole time. However, what do you do if all of a sudden you're listening to it and your thumb kind of starts to do this? This is where the thumbs up, thumbs down technique comes in. So I'm going to walk you through exactly what it is why we do it, and how to do it, and then I'm going to show you exactly how it is done by using this song that we've been working on throughout this entire course. So here's how you go about to implement this, specifically in the context of finishing up your mix. Step one is you want to either mix down your song into an MP3 or WAV file, maybe upload it to Google Drive or Dropbox or SoundCloud, whatever you're doing, you just want to have the ability to listen on a different set of speakers. So I'm going to assume most of you, when you're mixing, you tend to mix on the same speaker, right? Whether that's your studio monitors, whether that's your headphones. For me, I'm a headphone mixer. I don't even use these monitors hardly ever. They're basically just for looks, just to make my desk look better. But the case remains, you tend to have one pair of headphones or monitors that you use on the entire mix. And that comes with a real set of problems because your ears, you there will likely be problems that you then don't catch because you're sort of narrowing in on just that one specific set of speakers. And so what we need to do is to create, um, you could say, checks and balances. We need to put this song through the ringer. We need to put it out there in the world in different environments and see, does it stand up to the test or Is the thumb going to go down at certain parts once we expose it to a new environment that we haven't heard that song in before? So once you have your song mixed down, or in this case, in the first round of this, I'm just going to use my DAW still, except I'm now going to be using these little earbuds uh, to listen back. And then uh, I'll walk you through exactly what that looks like. Now, the next step in that, once you have your song and you have a new set of speakers or, or earbuds, you want to create a note, basically just a checklist. So in this case, I just opened up the notes app on my MacBook here and I already got it started here. Wish you back the name of the song, Mix Checklist. And then I'm going to create a checklist in a very precise way. So what I'm gonna do is listen to this song from start to finish. And I want you to, again, think of the thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm gonna listen to the song, my thumb will be up at the start. And all I'm doing is listening, listening, listening. As soon as I hear something, and my thumb goes down, I pause the song, and I go and I write it into this checklist. Now, a very important thing to remember here is I am not going to make the corrections on the fly. I am not going to touch anything in my DAW until I am done writing all of the notes or writing everything into this checklist. We're not making corrections yet. We are only taking note of what we think we for sure want to correct, or sometimes 
we, we might add something with a bit of a question mark. Like, I think we might need to address it. And I'll write down just enough to give myself the memory and the knowledge of, okay, that's what I'm talking about. So in a minute or two here, I'm going to go ahead and dive in and we are going to walk through this song and we are going to implement this exact thumbs up, thumbs down technique. Now, I want to give you just a bit more reasoning behind this. I want you to have a clear picture and understanding of why this is so important. The reason this really matters is because you have to put your song out in the real world in the context in which your listeners are going are going to be listening to your song. It doesn't matter in a very real sense. It doesn't matter what your song even sounds like in your headphones or in your studio monitors if you don't know what it sounds like out in the real world. If you don't know what it sounds like in a car, if you don't know what it sounds like on cheaper earbuds or on AirPods or on a Bluetooth speaker that is in a very reverbic room, let's say, you really want to get a feel for how does your mix sound in all of these different environments across all of these different applications and speakers and earbuds, headphones, all of that. And then what you want to do is go and try and obtain as much balance as you can so that your song and your mix sounds as good as possible across all of them. This is very much a balancing act. It's not about having your song or mix sound perfect in one context because that is not actually balance. We want your song to sound as good as possible and across a bunch of different applications. And so even if it sounds perfect over here, we want to find the center. We want to find that spot in the middle to where it sounds good and it sounds balanced across as many applications as possible. So I hope that makes sense. That is the whole point of a good mix and a good master is that it sounds good on basically everything. Now, there is a caveat to this, and we'll get into it uh, after I walk through this. And the caveat is basically your mix probably won't sound as good as you want it to in the car, because guess what? Your favorite songs also don't sound as good as you think they do in the car. So we need to make sure that we are still keeping things in the proper context, because especially in the example of a car, cars have terrible acoustics. And even the songs that you love by artists that are professionally mastered and mixed, even those mixes, if you really listen for them, you'll start to hear the flaws if you listen in a in a suboptimal environment, right? So this is not about getting things perfect, but it is about trying to get that balance that I'm talking about. Okay, enough of me going on about this technique. Let's actually dive in and let's apply it and let's see how this thumbs up, thumbs down technique works on this specific song. So here we go. I'm just going to hit play. And again, it's basically a thing of I start it with my thumb up. As soon as I hear anything that I'm like, oh, I don't know, maybe that needs to be addressed, thumbs down, and then I'll make a note of it here in my checklist. Okay, so here we go. Summers are cold, but winters are warm Since you're not here The colors are gone The black and the white is all I see now Even tequila doesn't taste right Even cold play doesn't sound right Drive my car down 25 Just a feeble attempt to feel something good Cause all I just wish you were here again And I, I just wish Okay, I think we just need, and I think I caught this earlier on in the mixing process, is there's this little part here. And I, I will hear again And I so, and I, it almost kind of, the instrumentation around it, maybe if I could sustain that guitar pad a little bit so that it doesn't feel like it, the energy drops off too much. So I'm just going to do energy drop off, drop off um, in chorus one. Whoop. I still don't know how to type. Energy drop off in chorus one. Um, where are we at here? Again, and I. After and I, or it's basically right at the words and I. Okay, let's keep it going. I just wish, just wish you were here. Oh, what a time, what a time, what a time, what a time you want. Oh, I know it's stupid. 
One thing I'm going to write in here with a question mark is acoustic guitars too loud? Now, I don't think they sound too loud on these earbuds, but they are at the point where I could see them sounding a bit too loud on certain applications. See, this is all, again, it's all about balance. It's not about does it sound perfect in one environment. It's about how can we find the optimal place so that it doesn't ever sound too distracting or too harsh or too loud or not loud enough. We're always trying to find that middle ground. That way, again, it just sounds as good as possible no matter which speaker or headphone or earbud you throw at it. So acoustic guitar is too loud, question mark. So we'll have to test that out across maybe another speaker or two as we go through this process again. But I wish that I could wish you back. Okay, here I think that piano can be turned down down during uh, interlude, I guess. I never know what to call these sections <laughs> uh, after chorus one. Because, see, you want to hear that distorted effect of guitar. That's really what your ears are after there. And so we don't need to hear as much of the piano. So I think we want to turn that piano down a little bit there. These pictures on my phone, deleted them all except for one. They were photographed just to have something physical to remain. So, what I'm hearing there, this is very specific to these earbuds. That electric guitar sounds a little bit too loud. It didn't sound too loud on my studio headphones. This is why this process matters so much. This is why this matters so much. Because I wouldn't have caught it if I hadn't checked this mix on a different set of speakers. So it might, see the thing about this too is it might end up sounding a little bit too loud in the end because these types of earbuds and these earbuds specifically tend to be a bit high end-ish. And so you'll have that even when I listen to other songs by artists that are professionally by artists that have songs that are professionally mastered and mixed, there are also sometimes electric guitars or certain sounds in the high frequencies that kind of sound a bit bright and pop through the mix a bit much. But I think this is a little bit too much. It's a little excessive. And I think that could mean that it's that it is a problem. And so that's why I'm going to go ahead and write this in and we'll probably just turn it down very slightly. That way it doesn't sound too loud on these earbuds. Okay. I like to think we'd make it if we tried again. I just wish you were here again. And I, I just wish, just wish you were here. Mm, what a time, what a time, what a time, what a time you want. So the same thing for chorus two, that electric guitar, it's cutting through a bit too much in verse two and chorus two as well. I could wish you back. Okay, I have an idea here. I think it could be interesting if we fade it in that muted electric guitar so that it doesn't come in right away so that we only hear basically those acoustic guitars and then slowly with just a volume fade in on that electric guitar track there. So I'm going to do fade in uh, during instrumental. Just do that. <laughs> There's, 
those those O's are too bright, too loud and bright. So I might want to turn them down and do some EQ work on the top end so that there's just less of that brightness. Too loud and bright in instrumental. That O there, the panned O track, is slightly too loud as well. Just, I'm just gonna do slightly. It's just a little bit too loud, I think. No. Now, this is something that I did kind of notice on my studio headphones, but I didn't think it was that bad, or it, or at least I didn't think it was worth going in and fixing. But on these earbuds, I do feel like that electric guitar part. The timing is pretty janky. <laughs> the timing is pretty off. I am ahead of the beat, therefore, quite long stretches there. Like there it's fine. Especially in the first half. I think if we used Melodyne to adjust some of the timing of those strums, um, adjust timing of electric guitar strums in final chorus. Again, this is a thing that I heard on the studio headphones, but it kind of felt buried because studio headphones, you hear more bass, you hear more mid-range versus when you really use like laptop speakers or your phone speakers or earbuds that focus more on the high frequencies, your ears will pick up on these things much easier. And it's just another reason why it's so important to do this thumbs up, thumbs down technique. Okay, and I need to do a volume automation. Here, I need to turn down the word I in last line of song. Because it pops through, right? Here. Come on. It's, it, it's imbalanced. It's, I wish that... Ah. And there's, it cuts through too much, so we just need to use a little volume automation to take maybe 2 dB away from that or something like that. And there it is. There's our checklist. Isn't this process awesome? It really helps give you perspective and just listening on a different set of speakers or headphones is going to make all the difference in the world to just make sure that you don't have any cringy mistakes in your song that you overlooked or to just reinforce balance or to make sure that there is balance, um, to make sure that there aren't any particular tracks that are cutting through too much that are too loud, or maybe there are tracks that are just buried that you want to hear, but all of a sudden you don't hear them in the new environment or with the earbuds that you're listening on. All of these things just matter so much and especially when you're coming to the end of a mix you've put so much of blood sweat and tears into us into your song and it's been just such an arduous journey at least especially in mixing sometimes it's not as fun anymore because we just want the song to be done but this is where just a little bit of discipline is very necessary because you don't want to go through all those hours of working on your song to have obvious mistakes or to have obvious flaws that you could have easily picked up on and fixed if you had simply done this technique. So that's why it's so important. So now I'm going to go ahead, jump back into the DAW, and I'm going to one by one check off this checklist. So let's dive into that. All right, let's dive into this checklist and just one by one knock it out. Now, a quick point on, you may be asking the question, should I be using the same earbuds or headphones that I used when I was making the checklist or should I go back to my studio monitors or headphones? And I would say go back to your studio monitors 
or headphones. Um, because that we still want that to be your center focus as to when you're working on your mix. I just think that's the most simple and balanced way to approach this is you now have an idea of what needs to be adjusted, but you're also still using the same monitors and speakers when you're making the adjustments. And, you know, if you're using any decent monitors or headphones, it'll probably be a pretty flat audio source. So it's not too boosted in the bass, not too many high frequencies, right? It's pretty even. And so I would just say, yeah, just use your studio monitors or headphones that you usually use. And that is what I'm doing here. So let's go ahead and one by one, check off these boxes. So energy drop off in chorus one. Let's see if we can address that. Something good, cause all I just wish you were here again. You know what? I have an idea. I have an idea. I kind of thought of this when I was playing back, but I was like, ah, I don't know. But now I think it might actually work. I think I like, so let me find the track first. So it'll be this one. I think I like how this sounds in chorus two better than in chorus one. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, copy and paste it over here, and we'll see if that sounds a little better. Feel something good, cause all I just wish you were here again. And I, I just wish, just wish you were here. Okay, now that one note, this isn't even on the checklist, but. And I, but I think this needs to be a little louder that way. And I, I just wish, just wish you were here. Oh, what a time, what a time, what a time, what a time it was. Oh, I always stupid. Yeah, and I think. I just turned it down slightly too. I just thought that sounded a little bit better. I thought it was a tiny bit too loud. Anyway, let's actually focus on what we were doing, which maybe that did take care of that. Let me again, see. Yeah, I may I may have been overthinking it. It's one of those things, you're not gonna have the perfect song, you're not gonna have the perfect mix. And at this stage in the process, it, we've spent so many hours on it and I've spent so many hours on this song now that if you reach a point where you have a problem and you truly don't really know how to fix it or fix it in a fairly quick manner, it's, the problem probably isn't that bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Again, I think it's fine. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that. We'll check that off. Now, acoustic guitars, too loud. We'll see what the acoustic guitars sound like over here. It's so interesting because the acoustic guitars sound perfect in my studio monitors here, but they sounded like they might be a little too loud on the earbuds. So with that knowledge, I probably will want to turn the acoustic guitar bus down by maybe a dB at most. So it's at 1.7 now. Let's do this. See, and here's what's cool. The acoustic guitars sound just as good at minus one dB. So you're not losing anything here in my studio headphones, but we are probably gaining something if we play this song on, say, cheap earbuds or just speakers that favor the high frequencies, because now it won't be quite as loud and it won't be as out of balance. I know stupid, but I wish that I could wish you back. Yeah, we'll see how the guitars sound over here. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think the 1 dB subtle move there did what it needed to do. Now, piano turned down during interlude after chorus one, right? Which was here.
yeah, we just need to adjust the volume of this. And I think I can actually, let me see, is there, are there a bunch of plugins on here? There are a bunch of plugins, but I think just because I just want to go for the easy thing. But I wish that I could wish you back. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it down on the clip level here. Okay, now as I'm playing this, I'm realizing not only do we want to turn down this piano part here, I think we also just want to turn up that distorted guitar. I mean, it's such a great sound, right? I love it so much. I know I keep going nuts over it, but it's such a fun sound. And I think we can go ahead and do it overall because I don't think it's going to negatively affect anything. because maybe we would want it a little louder at the end there anyway when everything is present. So, piano turned down during interlude in verse uh, after chorus one. Okay, turn down electric guitar in verse two and chorus two. So that was this electric melody track. We just need to turn it down. Yeah, so nice. We already have the mix tool gain plugin automation here. So we can just go ahead and use that. So it's basically from here to here. Yeah, so just this. Maybe turn this down by dB. Something physical to remember. Or two. fine. I don't want to lose too much of it. I don't want to get too obsessed with the wrong kind of balance or focusing. How do I describe this? Balance is a tricky word because balance isn't about having all the tracks at an equal volume or that type of thing, right? But it's more about at every second of the song. And then as you stretch it beyond that to every section of the song, and then the song at large is, is there a feeling of balance? Does everything feel like it is in a correct place? And sometimes that correct place maybe sounds a bit um, edgy, maybe sounds a bit risky in, in terms of, is it turned up a little bit too loud? But maybe that is what sounds good, right? So don't get too hung up on the word balance. I don't know why I've been using that word so much because I've, I've actually been thinking some about that word lately. I'm like, maybe we overuse it because maybe there would be a better word or a better viewpoint from which to approach mixing. But not entirely because balance is still a great word. But anyway, it's just a thought that I've been kind of working through of late. Anyway. What time, what time you are. Yeah, that's good. I'll move on from that. The next one is the muted electric guitar fade in during the instrumental. And that is on the same track. Right, so it's basically this. So probably from about here to perhaps here, maybe something like this.
Yeah, I like that fade in. That's a cool little automation move there that I like. Now those vocal O's are too loud, too bright. And I think this is something I totally forgot to talk about in the last automation video is I just duplicated that audio. I duplicated this track and then I put some Alter Boy on this, uh, which it looks like already bounced that down to audio to save on CPU, but it's super basic just using Little Alter Boy by Sound Toys and lowering the format and maybe adding some drive as well in the plugin. And then layering the two together. And then I think I'm sending them both to, uh, no, I'm sending them both to the background vocals bus. So they're basically still individual tracks. So let's go ahead and just turn down both. And we'll <laughs> I have an idea here. I have an idea here that I think is gonna work great. I think we wanna bring the second track kind of in and out using some volume automation. I think that's gonna sound great because here, let me just show you. Let me write this automation in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? It's kind of riding a wave a little bit, or it's not. Now, another thing I think I need to do is just get rid of some of those low frequencies. We don't need as many low frequencies. So let's go ahead and, uh, wait, not high, Marcus, we want low frequencies. boost it here as well. Yeah, that high boost not sounding good at there at the end. I think that sounds great. I love that. So cool. Vocal O's uh, track too loud and bright instrumental. Okay. Panned overhead track is too loud slightly. Okay. So that would be this one. <laughs> going to undo for some reason earlier on in the process I did some volume automation on this to turn down the ending here but now I'm kind of losing it and I want to hear that ending so I'm going to turn this back up I think we're good there and then adjust timing of electric guitar strums in the final chorus. So stupid that I'm having to do this. I'm not perfect, guys. I, I hope you didn't ever think that. But yes, 
at the final step of a mixing project, I'm going in and adjusting the timing of a damn electric guitar part. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> It's this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Melodyne. And try to lock in the timing a little better. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do here that I always make sure is make sure the time grid is not active. That way I can make, actually make fine tune adjustments without it trying to snap anything to a grid. Okay, so over here. Let's see what we got here. Okay, we need to make this grid. Right, 16th. Let me see here. Wait. <laughs> this one is a little fast. Overall, okay. Yeah, see, these are kind of all a little bit early. And these are definitely early. Or wait, I'm confused by this. Okay. Let's bring this down a little bit so we can solo and on solo. Yeah, so this entire bar here is quite fast. Or it's it's I'm hitting the, the notes too early. I got ahead of myself. So it's just, just all of this needs to go like this. That I believe. Something like that. I think here I came back to a reasonable place. So let's see, see how that sounds. Even even here though, I'm still hitting some of these a little early. All right. This one here. I think that's good enough. I think that is good. Now let's turn this back down to where it was, which was minus 12. Uh, right there. Much better. It's much more in the pocket, in that timing pocket, like it's supposed to be. So I finally fixed that at the very end of the mix, which is, again, super embarrassing for me. But anyway, moving on. So one more to go here in this uh, or at least in round one of the checklist, the thumbs up, thumbs down technique, and that is turn down the word I in the last line of the song. So that was very simple, just a tiny bit of volume automation on this vocal here at the end. But I wish that I could wish it's just that right there. But I wish that I so we just grab this and do something like that. Wish that I could wish you Maybe even more. Maybe go three. Much better. So we did a 3 dB cut on just the word I there on that lead vocal. And it sounds much more 
in, in balance with everything else. So my friend, that is round one. Now, this isn't where it ends. Don't do this just one time. You want to do this at least three times. So I'm, I, I might not do it three times because for this song, because, you know, this isn't about getting this song 100% perfect. And I'm not trying to keep harping on and keep spending more and more time on this particular song, just because at some point it's not even going to be that helpful to you if I keep going through this checklist over and over. But I will do this at least one more time on a different set of speakers, perhaps in my car. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. And then um, I'll see you there. So thank you so much for watching. Go implement this, this once again. Do not overlook the power of the thumbs up, thumbs down technique. It is a beautiful thing.